Thank you, Steph, and uh, it's very nice to be here to celebrate 10 years of CPI. So, um, yeah, my current role is uh, as uh, joint chair of the Chemistry Growth Partnership, uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, what it is, what it is and what it, uh, what it does. Uh, but I'll also rely on some of my ex previous experience where uh, I've been the chief executive of Johnson Matthey until recently for uh, the previous 10 years. So a little bit on setting the scene for the UK chemical industry. Uh, as I said, what is the Chemistry Growth Partnership? What does it do? Uh, and then one of the things it does uh, is uh, it's connected with innovation. I want to talk to you a little bit about my views on that in this country and the potential uh, for much uh, higher growth in the future than we've had in the past. So the UK chemical industry is, I think, a little bit of a sort of unsung hero of this country's uh, manufacturing industry because I guess most of the companies in it uh, are business to business uh, and they don't talk much to consumers. Uh, I heard someone last night comment that uh, they had never heard of BASF, the biggest uh, chemical uh, uh, company on the planet, uh, until they started advertising. Uh, this is BASF and this is some of the things we do. So that's a kind of stark reminder that we're, uh, we're an under-promoted uh, and, un um, and not properly understood industry. But the UK chemical industry is global and it's very competitive. It's massively diverse. Uh, it supplies the sort of building blocks of products to a, probably every industry that's also in this country. So uh, products for medicines, products for foods, construction, transport, leisure, pretty much everything uh, this industry supplies into. So it's got a lot of members. Uh, and for that reason, it's, uh, it's quite a difficult thing to manage because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of participants. Uh, when we look at the uh, aerospace industry uh, that's, um, that's been mentioned earlier, uh, they only have two or three or four participants uh, and it's much, more, much easier for them to come together uh, and make uh, an impact. So some of our uh, chemical industry is uh, very energy intensive. Uh, the price of energy therefore becomes extremely important to it. It's in a, it's in a competitive global environment. It makes bulk uh, products at low margins, uh, maybe transforming hydrocarbons or whatever uh, they choose to do. And at the other end, there are some very highly specialized and very high-tech uh, industries making small quantities of very high margin uh, um, uh, products. And of course, varying sizes of companies from the BSFs Johnson Matthey, which is the biggest uh, listed company uh, in, uh, in the UK nowadays, uh, and through to SMEs and, and tiny little companies too. So this industry spends uh, five billion pounds a year on uh, R&D. Uh, it contributes 60 million pounds per day uh, to the UK economy. Uh, it invests its own money, two billion pounds a year in capex. Uh, employs half a, half a billion people, 500,000 uh, people, half a million people. Uh, and uh, they're well-paid jobs and they're safe jobs. The image of the industry in the old days, well, this is a dirty and, uh, and uh, dangerous industry. That is absolutely not true now. Every company represented in this room will know that safety is top, very top of their agenda. Um, it exports 50 billion pounds a year. Uh, and uh, it exports more than it imports, which is, uh, which is a, a useful uh, thing, and it's the number one, UK's number one uh, exporting sector. So let's move on to the uh, Chemistry Growth Partnership, been going a little over a, a year now. Um, and what this is, uh, is a partnership between industry and government uh, set up to promote growth. So here's the, uh, the membership um, of these companies are all uh, represented uh, on the Chemistry Growth Partnership and the members are all CEOs uh, of those, uh, those companies. Um, and of course it's not all of the chemical industry in this country, uh, but we think it's a good representative sample. Uh, and of course if we allowed it to get enormous to represent everybody, 
uh, then it would be completely unmanageable. So we have to, uh, we, ha we have a, a mandate really to keep it uh, reasonably small uh, so that we can come out with distinct uh, messages uh, and, uh, and uh, focused actions. Um, our joint, my joint chairman is uh, now Matthew Hancock, minister. Uh, and of course, we have the biz team uh, in, the, uh, in, in the arrangement, and we're, we're very ably supported also by the, the CIA, the Chemical uh, Industry Association. So the CGP fits under the umbrella of the Industrial Strategy Council. Uh, so the CGP, the Chemical Growth Partnership, is one of about a dozen other industries represented on that uh, Industrial uh, Strategy Council, uh, aerospace, auto, agro, wind, comms, there's a, there's a number of others. Uh, and that ISC is chaired by Vince Cable, from whom you will hear after lunch. Um, and when I go to those meetings to talk about the other uh, issues uh, with the other uh, growth partnerships, uh, I have to say the agenda of each is, is very, very similar, and the issues uh, all come out as being uh, very similar too. So I generally think that this, uh, this industrial strategy, uh, which is a reasonably new initiative, has been a, a good thing and has helped focus uh, the, the small amount of government money that's available uh, and it's now, I think, being spent in the right areas. So what do we actually do? So here's our uh, priority themes. Um, energy, of course, massively important. As I've said uh, before, some of our uh, members uh, are very energy intensive. Uh, the price of energy for them is a massive uh, consideration. Uh, but we've also got to consider climate change, which we also think is a really important uh, issue to grapple with. Um, and um, so that's led by, uh, by Tom Crotty. Uh, and of course, there are issues in global energy. Uh, the issue that really um, uh, hits us uh, full square is the fact that in America now uh, they have access to cheaper gas. Uh, so um, what we are doing, our main, um, uh, our main uh, work streams in, within the energy thing uh, are to be helpful to the government uh, in uh, promoting fracking uh, of uh, our own resources here. In fact, our, um, our minister was heard to say, and I paraphrase, that it's kind of our duty to extract uh, that gas uh, from, um, from this country, to the, which will be to the benefit of our children. We've extracted the coal and the oil and the, uh, the, the conventional gas, so it's our duty to also extract this gas. And we know there are issues with uh, people thinking about uh, the environment, uh, but we think that they're very, uh, those, those issues are something that we can address. Uh, we're also working on the climate change side of how to turn uh, and how to promote uh, the turning of waste into energy as one of the examples of, uh, of getting some energy, uh, uh, hopefully competitively, um, but also addressing the climate change issue. Um, in this area, INEOS and SABIC, you saw them on the previous chart, uh, or uh, recently they've been in the news announcing quite significant investments. Uh, in either the storage uh, or the exploitation uh, of uh, fracked gas. So that's the recent news in uh, energy. Uh, supply chains uh, and whatever's happened with manufacturing over the last 20 years in this country, uh, it, it seems that the supply chains in this country have become what's called hollowed out. Uh, so they're not as powerful, they're not as, uh, as, um, uh, as good uh, and consistent uh, as we'd like them. Uh, so there's quite a lot of work going in on that front. Uh, and an interesting trend that we're picking up, uh, was mentioned in a previous presentation, that we are seeing a trend to onshoring again. Uh, so for a lot of the last 10 or 20 years, uh, global companies have tended to do their manufacturing in places like China and India. Uh, just the first signs that uh, those days are maybe slightly coming to an end. Perhaps it's not. Uh, well, as we know, as I know from, uh, from Johnson Matthey, when you have plants in these areas and they want uh, and, they, and they, they demand uh, and get uh, double digit increases in pay every year, well, it doesn't take too many years to double the cost of your, uh, of your workforce. So that is a trend on one side, and I think there are also doubts in some of these countries uh, about uh, reliability, consistency, uh, safety. 
uh, and the supply chain is also a long one. So um, these are decent trends for onshoring in this, uh, in this country and some work is going on uh, on that front too. Skills. Mentioned before, do we have the skills to succeed? Um, obviously it's a big debate. Obviously it's a very good area where industry and, uh, and um, government can work together to try and uh, ensure that uh, coming out of our universities are the, the best possible uh, graduates. I think that um, in Johnson Matthey uh, things have changed over the last 10 years in that uh, nowadays uh, many of our graduates come from Europe uh, and um, I think that uh, there are some countries in southern Europe that aren't providing jobs for their brightest people uh, and this really is an opportunity for us here uh, to attract that talent to this country. Uh, and uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, there were most of our graduates in Johnson Matthey in this country were, uh, <coughs> were Brits. Uh, nowadays, uh, perhaps the majority are from, uh, from Europe. And we'd like to be able to bring in more from outside Europe, um, and that's been a problem recently uh, with uh, immigration policy, but one hopefully we must address. <coughs> Let me move on to uh, innovation, because that's the focus of this conference. Uh, and as previously recorded, this is not a low-cost economy here. Wages and pensions are a, are a big issue. But we do have a very competent workforce in our, in our experience. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, that's a, a big plus. So our growth strategy, if you like, for the next uh, period, and we as the CGP have set ourselves a target of 50% growth uh, in our value add in this country, uh, by 2030, uh, which is another £35 billion pounds worth of, uh, worth of uh, income to the country. Uh, so how are we going to get there? Well, we need to sustain the bulk chemical side of our industry. We've got a, a very decent bulk chemical uh, industry here. Uh, perhaps it's not going to grow at the at record uh, rates, and there are issues with the cost of energy and other, other things, but sustaining that is a, is a key plank of our, uh, our strategy. But to promote uh, the high tech, the, the, the IP-containing, uh, higher margin type businesses. Uh, and that's uh, where we come down to innovation. So, you know, the, uh, the process of invention, and invention obviously uh, happens in universities, um, but I think it happens even more uh, in companies. Uh, where companies are, uh, have a relationship, a long-term relationship with a customer. The customer will share his vision, her vision of where they're headed in the future. And then you know what to invent, uh, which will make a difference to them in the future. Uh, lots of companies, uh, Johnson Matthey included, spend a lot of money on R&D to invent things. Uh, and where we've fallen over, which has already been mentioned, is this innovation pathway. Uh, and this is where CPI is going to be massively helpful because there isn't uh, a company uh, in this country that can afford the kind of uh, expertise and kit that the CPI has uh, for its own use, just in case it might need it. Uh, so this is a, an incredibly uh, powerful um, uh, facility that uh, you know, I would implore everybody uh, in industry to use more of because uh, it's a much more efficient way. And in Johnson Matthey, what we found was from invention uh, through to commercialization, took on average about seven years. Uh, it staggers me that it takes that long, but that's on average. Very rarely do we beat seven years. Uh, and if through working together more closely uh, and working with the CPI, we could get that down to three years or four years, that would be a massive, massive uh, stimulus to the growth that we're after <coughs> between now and 2050. So that's, you know, we are good at inventions in this country uh, and the innovation bit is the tougher bit uh, and we need all the help we can get. So um, that's all I really wanted to say as uh, setting the scene um, and now let's hope we've got some difficult questions for our panel. Thank you.